I've been drawing the same name forever. Let me teach you how to pick a good name from the start. So my name is Sive, but I definitely didn't start off with that name when I was first getting into graffiti. At the start, graffiti just totally captivated me and its uniqueness and style and form. And of course, I just went after using my actual first name. Just starting out, I had no thought of like artistic uniqueness or anything. It was just, hey, can I kind of do this style in my own word? After you get bored of writing your first name, the next evolution is to try to pick a name that has some meaning or some emphasis to like it. Like ant, where it's a small animal, but very strong. And so it could be literally anything, but having a little bit of descriptor to your name can be a fun way to add, you know, style to it and add stuff down the road. So for me, I went after the name Fast. I thought that thing had some emphasis and momentum to it. I thought it was kind of edgy. And sure enough, I, I rolled with that for a little while. And for me, Fast kind of already has like this action to it. The, the way the word's written, it's kind of square and really even when you say it, feel that in it. And, and that kind of stood out to me as like a cool opportunity to, to take something that has some you know established meaning and you'll kind of roll it through the artwork and kind of try to bend that in people's minds. I think it's honestly pretty rare to stick with this kind of first pass of your names. So at this point, you might be feeling a little bit stale with your name selection. You know, it might be a nickname or something, and that might not feel like it's supposed to be, or it's just a word with meaning that's kind of drying up for you. But hopefully at this point, you've maybe found a couple letters that you're you're liking to stylize a little bit more. I know for me, the, the S in fast really did stick out, so I was, I was feeling that. I kind of wanted to integrate that into another name. So one of my least favorite parts about an alphabet is the fact that you're forced to write ABC like right back to one another. The flow of B and C is super, super hard to get nice. And honestly, when I'm working through things, it's so rare that I think about the flow of the C before I'm writing the B, especially when it's not something I, I touch every day. And it's here that we can actually start melding and seeing what letters will work better with one another. Now, sure enough, you can probably find a way to make any letter work next to the next, but there are certainly some easier and harder combinations out there. So the name I took after fast was actually side, S-I-D-E. And let's take a look at how that works. So what I saw with this name was a cool way to kind of work off, you know, a name with a meeting. I actually was doing like fast lane and side swipe as like combo names. So who knows, maybe I was just stuck on kind of car themes, but I thought side was like a cool punchy way. And you can see we got a very kind of square style to this. You know, the I takes up, you know, square chunk, the D is a very square letter, you know, there's not much negative space on the top or bottom of that, and the E certainly, you know, that works in a, in a nice square as well. So it kind of turned out to be kind of a big punchy name after all. So taking a look at that square idea around each letter, the A actually has a little bit of negative space up in the top sections of it, whereas that B is pretty much solid. You get a little bit up here, but you know, it seems like it's even more emphasized because the C has the reverse of that. It has a bunch of negative space up there. So now we've got this super empty area next to those. And that's pretty much why I really don't like the BC combo. So the big takeaway here with the square letters is you can make a super easy combination with any of these that also kind of complements pretty well. Taking a random draw here and saying W-I-S-K maybe, let's see how those four lay up. And so here you can see we've got kind of a straight edge in between each letter and it works out all right. So if you want something kind of easy to build up and get an understanding for how letters work with one another, try some of these square ones and, and see how it works out. Now let's call the other letters in this mix negative letters because they have a bunch of negative space in little sections that come around that kind of square box. Let's take a look at those. If we're gonna draw a box around them, kind of take a look at what areas are not occupied by the ladder itself. And that's pretty much what we call negative space there. So for the A example, we kind of have this top triangle space that's not occupied. And then for the C, it's kind of the reverse of that on this left side. You can certainly cover up the, the right end over here a little bit, depending on how far you bring this line over, but we'll, we'll count that for now. The bottom of the F, you kind of have this square that's left over. J's, you kind of have a bottom square too, because this oftentimes curves over, so you leave a little bit. And actually, the L's kind of nice in that it can take some of that up. But on the reverse, the L, you might have space on the bottom here, 
or most importantly, this top section of the L that is so much negative space. And that's why you, you super rarely see L's because it's hard for other letters to take up that space. P, you'll definitely have some at the bottom there, but most importantly, top section for sure. T is another nasty one that unless you get pretty saucy with it, you're going to have some big negative boxes and just look how much larger those are than, you know, the F or something. So you got to find a way to work with all that. On the V, you got some at the bottom. Normally you can round off your top pretty well. And then similarly on the Y, you kind of probably have some over here on the right. So obviously people have found great ways to use all these letters, but how do you make it work for you? And I kind of mentioned it with this J and L combo here is you have to have letters next to it that can accentuate into that negative space to try to help pick it up. The problem with negative space is if it is running the rules of your piece, it can kind of take over and look really, really gnarly. So what kind of worked out in my favor is when I picked fast, F-A-S-T, the F and the A kind of actually worked well together. And the reason for that is F has negative space down here on the right side of it. But guess what? The bottom of the, the right side of the A occupies that space, so you're able to actually kind of get them and merge them together. So when I take my A, I'm going to come down and into that negative space of the F. And even I've got a crossbar that can take up more of that. And then kind of as a bonus, we called S a pretty square letter. So that means, you know, its left side is going to be pretty square. But guess what? I've now made the side of my A pretty straight. So now I just kind of butt the S up against it, kind of squish it over there. And then the T, what do we see? We see how I've got a huge negative space at the bottom. But if I kind of pull my S over a little bit, I now can like occupy this space with the right side of the S. So I can, I can bring the top of my T up a little bit and start it over there. And now I don't have to worry that you know, that big long line of the center of the T is already kind of sitting next to the S. So it's, it's giving me that kind of pacing of it all. Now with the T, T's are a great last letter to your name because you leave that negative space off to the ether. You know, it's bonus. You don't have to occupy it. It's the edge of your piece. So having big negative spaces as your last letter can work really well. And that's, that's a great way to handle some of like the Y's or, or even like a P where it's got kind of some funky negative space to it. And something that's a preference of mine is, you know, not having letters double occupy space. What that means is because the F doesn't have any information down here, the A is able to, to take this over. So you just have one letter in this region. The opposite of that is like, what if we wrote, uh, put an E down here instead, you know, an E is going to have a cross member. Now we've got a big bottom cross member of our E. So now what I don't like to do is I don't like to put my A coming right over top of that. You know, it kind of, now it gets a little muddy down here as to which letters which, how they crisscross. You got like a lot of horizontal coming from that bottom. You got a lot of horizontal from the A coming across for that crisscross. It honestly doesn't work as well. Now East could be a sweet tag. You just have to modify kind of how you're using that A a little bit. So I've, I've shortened up how much of my E that is and I've, I've squared it again. But now, how about I just push my A over a little bit. Now I'm not kind of double occupying. I can set it up, kind of stand it on top of that even a little bit. And, and now I'm not kind of conflicting things. And this is where you kind of get to that styling. You see I've added some, some top hats to my S, but I can add one over here to the A, and that helps occupy that, that weird negative space that I've also left over because my E didn't quite take it up. Even throw one on the E to kind of round it out because every other letter had it. And it's kind of these decisions that you're going to be able to use to, to accentuate your letters and build them up. How about I show you one more example with, with this J here. So we've got our J, I've, I've moved that over a little bit so to pull away how much of that negative space I have to make up. But if we pick a really square letter like an I next to it, I can now cr use that crossbar at the bottom of the I and, and push it over as far as I need to. Uh, you know, you, if you started it further to the right, it might leave that negative space, but now I can kind of just put them next to each other and, and they look all right. Maybe we'll do a, a saucy jerk with an R next. So this is once again our our square letter, so I can put that 
straight edge of the R right on the edge of the eye, and it, it works out pretty well. And then RK is a definitely a heavy combo. Ks and Rs have a lot going on to them, but we'll call it good with that. So after trying name after name after name, I kind of came to some of these understandings that, you know, super blocky S-I-D-E was bulky in my opinion. I really didn't like how the D was complementing the E. It kind of pushes it out a little bit. It's a bully of a letter and sometimes. So I wanted to drop that D. And so what did I do? I kind of played around with some other letters and that's kind of where I fell on Sive. So what works well with Sive is I'm actually taking this negative space of the V and I'm kind of just deleting it because I'm changing which angle that V comes up at so it matches my E a little bit better. And what that can do is it can it can merge those letters a little bit better because if you were to if you were to write it really kind of just crude and, and straight form, you're gonna have that negative space in the bottom of that V. So I'm getting rid of that by almost always orienting my V in kind of a funny way. And Vs are great at, at being able to do that because it's kind of just two lines that come to a point. It doesn't really matter much more than that. You can get the kind of sensibility of the letter. And then also, you know, you can kind of mess with it a little bit. I can tuck my V into this negative space of the eye so that I don't get this swathing kind of negative region in there. You know, if, you're, if the negative area is able to like kind of come into your piece, it makes this kind of like weird, weird feeling to it. So I like to occupy that as well as kind of bridge it, cut it off so like the negative space isn't reaching into it. So if we follow that, we can just kind of tuck these letters together by changing their orientation a little bit. So there, I've, I've turned my V a little bit, tucked it in, and an I as well. The center line of the I has gone from super straight to kind of angled there. And just the fun little play on, on how those letters can work with one another. So you know how I mentioned, you know, we got like a little bit more power in the R and the K. I feel like that kind of comes from, you know, there's a lot more lines in it. You know, with a K, you've got these three lines that one goes straight, one comes in, one comes out. There's a lot of energy in that letter. And the R the same way. You've got to come around and kick that leg down. It's, it's really interesting to see how those letters can be the centerfold of a name oftentimes. And something to consider with, with letters like that is, is your sizing and your spacing. When you have letters like an M or a W, those are got a lot of information into them and if you squish them a little bit too narrow, they look a little bit funny. Start this a little bit simply. Let's start with some square letters. Like how? So H-O-W, four very square letters at the end of the day. So something I want to show with this is kind of my even spacing here. I've kind of cut off my W. Now why is that? So W as like a powerful letter, it's going to have more information. And if you squeeze it into a narrow box like this, you're going to be forced to make that angle of the uprights super narrow. And in my opinion, that's way too narrow for a W. W's like to like spread wide. That looks a little bit more kind of natural to the W shape. So what happens with that W stretches a little bit wider? Your other letters also have to stretch a little bit wider. So let, let's start with our W, set our pacing there, and then work to the other ones. So I've got about four ticks wide for my W. And now my H and my O have to also occupy that same space. You can see much, much cleaner than our first attempt. And what you got to consider with the powerful letters are you got a lot more data in there. You got a lot more that has to be fit into that same region. And if you're sizing up and sizing down your letters all over the place in your piece, it's going to probably look a little bit funky. So when you're planning your name, it, it's okay to have this letter in there for sure. But what you really need to know is how much space is your biggest letter going to need. And then you can kind of build it up from there. Another way to go about that is maybe you don't want a massive O that's pushing a big hole in it. Throw an underline or something extra on that to, to merge it all back together and have each of your letters be the same height. We got some extra space, so let's draw a letter K as another power letter and see how much extra space a K can really just occupy on its own. 
So just looking at the structure of this guy, you can see it's already like angled and extra and this leg can come way out. So all those variabilities make K just like ton of detail, ton of add-ons and, and a really fun letter to play around with. So maybe you like the idea of some of the more powerful letters in your name. So you get a W or a K or an R or something in the mix to really make it punchy. But how many letters do you pick at the end of the day? So if you go for one letter, you know, that might be a little bit basic. Never really seen it done, so you could break some molds there. But hey, you know, I'm not one to judge. Have fun with it. There are definitely some artists out there that have mastered two-letter combos. Really simple, punchy out, you know, really entity-based names there. So can certainly be done. So three letters can definitely work for a lot of people, but something to keep in mind is crews oftentimes are three-letter combos. So you might kind of look like you're writing a crew name every time you write yours, but hey, by all means, it could work as well. Four letters is definitely the sweet spot by my name and my standard. You know, I've got four letters inside. It works really well for me. It's fun to have it be symmetric and squared up, but it's also fun to have some, you know, shorter stylings there. So it's a little bit more approachable for sure. If you get into the five letters and six letters, you're definitely getting more advanced. So it might be harder to get started with five letters because you got more to learn, more interactions between all those letters, but something to keep in mind, some growing room there, of course, you can get you know a little bit more out of your pieces if you got five in there. The symmetry is by far my favorite part of any artist that does a five letter name. You, know, you get one letter, two letter, letter three is nice in the center, four letter, five letter, kind of rounds it out. So you get this cool little, also again, like an entity vibe to the whole name. It might be a little crazy if you go to six plus letters here. Things that work well for them is, you know, it's a long stretch, so you might get a kind of a squished out name if you're, you're getting six different letters in the mix there, but it does give you more options in there. By all means, six letters could be a fun addition as well. So what do I mean by bonus? Well, a lot of artists add like the number one to the end of their name to signify like I'm Sive and the one and only Sive. So you might go by Sive one or the number two say, you know, there's no two alike, I'm Sive two. But by all means, you can add anything to the end of your name and call it good, question mark, an exclamation point, make it your own. So that's a fun way to, you know, rectify your name into something super, super unique after all. And certainly stand out a little bit differently than just the letters. You also can see letter bonuses as well. A lot of people add like an R to their end of their name. So I might be Cyver. And that kind of adds some verbiage to your, to your name. You know, it adds a little bit more personality to it. And oftentimes some of these are, you know, those same powerful letters like a T or a K or something. Something that has a big kick out that makes your four letter word a five letter and gives you some emphasis. So definitely pretty common to have some derivative names in the mix. These derivatives are a fun way to punch up your name when you're looking for something unique. You know, way back when, when I was doing stuff, looking for a fun way to do it, I actually ended up putting a number one instead of my I. And you know, that's my Instagram handle at this point is S, the number one VE. And that's got a fun flavor to it as well. It's a different way to take that one, put it in the mix and you know, when you type it out on the computer, kind of still reads Sive, so you know you get that flavor to it. It's actually been a while since I hit a bonus piece with Sivar. Let's get that in so the mix. Definitely, definitely have fun with it. Mix it up. Try to find something unique. I know it's a little bit intimidating when you start off and you go around. You Maybe you find a name you really like and someone else already has it. The best way to combat that is, you know, Search around, see if there's people on Instagram or YouTube that are, are making content or have made content with that name because at the end of the day, you want it to be something unique and stands true to you. And then you can kind of build your artistic style and build yourself up around it. For me, that's kind of why I fell to Sive at first. I didn't know all that structure stuff that made it end up work out pretty well. I kind of knew that I wanted something that had no meaning so I could actually build it up. It was it was something totally unique, nobody else had had it, and it was a four letter word that worked out pretty well. So from there I've been able to learn you know, how to complement the letters and how to build them up. So, so don't be worried if you're on your first, fifth, or tenth name at this point. You're learning each time over. Pick something you like out of these letters and how they work with other letters and make it your own. Or you know, take a word that exists and, and mash it up, twist it around find a name or something in a foreign language that has 
a cool flow to it and you can just make that all your own. You know, letters are so flexible at the end of the day that you can really make anything work. Right now, I do like the idea that kind of, you can have a method of saying it that's approachable. You know, I couldn't tell you how many times people say, oh, is your name Siv? And it's kind of like that funny play on, on live versus live. Both those words are identical in the English language. It's probably a fault of its own that you don't know what's what unless you know the context. But then again, you won't know my name until you know the context of it all. So that, that builds the story around the whole thing. Have fun with that story. Build that around your, your letters and your name. And at the end of the day, it's what you want to make here. Letters are kind of just your structure. And that the letters bring everybody to the one centerfold and, and call a graffiti. But stretch that out. Move that around. What does that mean to you? How are you using that? And, and is it something that you're going to take to to the newest extent. So of course, this is my kind of approach to how I ended up with my name. Tons of people get their names passed down or or however. Leave a little comment down below if you've got a cool story to your name about how you put it together or you know maybe even just the intent. Maybe you're like me and you kind of just like these letters and you just wanted to make something of it. It, it's always super fun to hear people's kind of origin stories of their names. So super excited to hear what, what you guys come up with. And, and definitely if you got a name that you want some feedback on, maybe you're, you're stuck on how some letters combine, drop me a DM over on Instagram or, or a comment down below and we can, we can work through it. I'm always happy to chop it up and, and see how you're running your letters. Hit my Instagram up at S, the number one VE, and we'll make it happen. Send me a photo of what you're working with or check out some of the stuff I've been posting. I think that's going to do it for me, guys. Stay up.